Hi, I'm here in Brickell, Miami. I am in front of the Haitian consulate. I must say that the situation for Haitians is very grave in the situation, in the sense that the Haitians don't seem to really care about each other. So um, as I searched, I looked Paul Malian Bastien, who is a politician here in Miami, asking her for information about the Biden law with the I-134, so that, you know, at least she would be able to help me find updates, etc. And she was like, I don't have anything to do with it. Okay, so this morning I decided, you know what, let me come to the Haitian Council here in Brickell, and you can see our Haitian flag flying here, and to ask them about the situation. And I must say that I saw a lack of, um, I saw a complete change in the Haitian community here. As I went inside, I saw young men, you know, wearing the braids, you know, the style that we knew back in the days of my youth. For Haitian men is no longer there. It's a whole new style. I guess it's more like the Rastafarian style. But anyway, I saw anger because it's hot in there. There's the AC. It doesn't seem to be on. It's really not a comfortable thing. They're waiting on the stairways. And by the way, there's not even parking. Uh, people have to steal parking, like at um, Walgreens in the back or maybe park at public so that they will be able to come here to the Haitian embassy to either renew passports. That's so sad that, if, you know, if you are um, a legal immigrant here, even to the renewed passport, it's so, it's so like, you know, the courtesy that used to be there, the, the, the formal presentation is no longer there. It's very informal. Uh, seems like, like a lack of education, and we know that our people are more educated than that. But um, this is what I am finding here at the Haitian Embassy. And so when I asked them, not embassy, but the consulate, so when I asked them about the I-134, the lady didn't know who Martin Bastien was, she didn't know anything about the I-134. And then after some time of my discussing, like, you know, how could we be so heartless? How could we not care for our people? How could we not try to reunite ourselves, even here in the diaspora? And then some guy comes in and says, you know, there's nothing we can do. Even I, I have my daughter that I have filed for since January, and they haven't called him yet, and that's all. And he went, he directed the lady in another direction. She got up from her seat so that she didn't have to deal with me anymore, and they were gone. So complete lack of concern of health helping others. It's like they say in Haitian Creole, nobody really cares about the um, attempt for salvation for the Haitian people. Uh, excuses after excuses that, oh, there are more than five times applicants. Well, what do you expect? We're killing each other in Haiti. So don't you expect there to be so many people trying to save their lives, even for two years, come here, build, a, um, build themselves, go to school, and maybe we go back to the country and rebuild the country. But there is only a sense of destroying the country, selling us over to the Dominican Republic, or wherever they can sell us over. No efforts to rebuild the country by rebuilding the youth and helping out the youth. So this is what I had to say, the sad situation in the Haitian consulate today um, that I discovered. No AC. People are struggling to get their passports right here in Miami at Brickell. And um, no caring for the for the latest policies to help Haitian people. The guy is like, oh, it's a courtesy. You just need to wait. Nothing at all. No sense of care for the Haitian people in the state of Haiti.